boxing truth here. Been invited to go to the Jacobs Daryanchenko fight as media. So I'm going to go check this prize fight out in person. Just enjoy the show, enjoy the main event. I'm very intrigued by this fight. This middleweight title clash between Danny Jacobs and Sergey Daryanchenko. This fight got me, uh, it's got boxing true shot of boxing. I can envision a great fight, or I can envision a, uh, a, a schooling session, a beatdown. But it's an intriguing fight, and it's a very important fight for both guys' careers. One guy is trying to finally win a legitimate world title after being pro for I don't know how long. It's been forever since Danny Jacobs has been a professional. Not a very impressive resume. Hasn't won a legitimate world title. His best win to date is, what, Peter Quillen? Life and death struggle with Selecki, a 54-pounder. Beat up a prospect in Arius. But he's taking more real fights ever since he signed with Eddie Hearn after the protection program with Heyman ran its course. And now Jacobs is in a real fight tonight, man. This is the type of fight that I really like. It's, it's a co-promotion. It's, it's not an in-house fight. A lot's on the line. The winner of this fight moves on to bigger and better things, especially for Dane Jacobs. That's a lot of pressure on him because he wins this fight. There's bigger fights in store for him. The type of fights that he's been wanting to be in. A potential chance against Canelo Alvarez and a chance, another chance to prove... That he's the best middleweight in the world. But Jacobs. He is what he is. He's just a top five contender. A title. A former title challenger. Failed to beat Gennady Golovkin. Got knocked out by Dmitry Pirog. Now he's going to face another Eastern European fighter. Either a third time is going to be the charm. Or the same fate that he's been getting. In his two prior fights against these type of fighters and he's fighting a very skilled very good boxer in Sergei Derianchenko Derianchenko is impressive man he's a shows very good combinations very sharp they don't they don't call him a technician for no reason the guy can box the guy puts his punches together very well he has really good footwork very good pivots he uh He's got decent power. He doesn't do anything extraordinary, but he does everything well. He's always in position to punch. He's been tested in some fights. He's been on the fast track after over 300 amateur fights. And the word is that he's he beat up Danny Jacobs on numerous occasions in sparring. It's not really a a, a secret. It's a... Uh, the word is out there. I mean, Daryachenko has, on most of occasions, got gotten the better of sparring, but that doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to win the fight. But it is a, a mental edge for him going into this fight. And now they're going to be at their absolute best in peak condition. And we're going to see what Danny Jacobs is made of. But to me, this is a more dangerous fight for Jacobs. Than the Gennady Golovkin fight for a couple of reasons. For one, he's not fighting, Jacobs is not fighting an established champion that had already made a bunch of defenses. I mean, Jacobs fought a Golovkin that was kind of disinterested in boxing. He was losing his hunger for the sport. He wasn't particularly all that interested in the Danny Jacobs fight. But now, he's going to be fighting a literally hungry fighter, a very hungry fighter who has. Hasn't had the easiest upbringing when it comes to this point. This is going to be Daryachenko's only chance, really, to vie for a world title. And a lot is on the line for him and also his promotional side. He's promoted by Lou DiBella, but he's also advised by Al Heyman. This is a very important fight for the PBC. This is PBC versus Eddie Hearn. This is Daryachenko versus... Danny Jacobs. This is Showtime versus the new HBO, which is going to be the zone. The PBC are hoping and praying that Derry Jenko can pull off this minor upset. So they will have a potential champion in their side and they actually they'll actually be able to offer 
a decent prize fight to Jamal Charlo, who is struggling to find opponents because he's on the wrong side of the street right now. So, they don't want the zone to eventually have all the middleweight champions under their banner. So, this is a very important fight for Deryachenko and for the PB side of things, have a champion on their side in the middleweight division in order to have some opponents for Jamal Charlo going in the future. Jacobs didn't look particularly impressive his last fight. I actually thought he narrowly lost a decision to Selecki, but I'm not going to cry robbery. He did knock him down in the 12th round, but he got hit too much in the fight. Maybe he took him lightly, this or that, but he was an undefeated guy, but a 54-pounder moving up in weight and not a particularly big puncher. And yet, he was able to uh, consistently tag Danny Jacobs on a consistent basis much more so than Jacobs was able to do to Selectly, which is why I thought Selectly narrowly won the fight by just a point. It was an uninspiring performance, very unimpressive, and now he's going to be fighting a better fighter, a full-fledged middleweight, a harder puncher, I believe a more smarter fighter than Golovkin, a more versatile fighter than Golovkin, and a more... He has more offensive creativity with his shots, his combinations. He has more arsenal... Of punches that he uh, displays in the ring than Golovkin. Golovkin, he's more powerful. He has a he has bigger power. He has great stamina. He has a great power jab. But he's not as versatile as Derry Yamchenko when it comes to combinations and offensive artillery. This is where Derry Yamchenko really, what he really brings to the table: his creativity, his combinations, his body work, and his his positioning always in place to punch you with his great balance. And footwork. This is, I believe, going to be the end of Danny Jacobs. He is what he is, just a glorified contender. I never was, a never going to be world champion. I just don't see the zone having all the middleweight champions under their banner. I see the PBC side prevailing in this fight tonight. I see Deryamchenko as just the hungrier fighter, the better fighter, the fresher fighter, the sharper fighter, the better boxer. Jacobs, even though he's never been a world, world champion, he's had a successful career, has made millions of dollars, has been in a big fight, pay-per-view fight, has really uh, cashed in in his HBO three-fight contract with, with HBO, and this is going to be the, one of the last HBO fights ever. So I, I sense a great fight tonight. Jacobs is going to want to win very badly because he knows there's a lot on the line. He knows what's in store for the future. But Darian Chanko is just going to be too good, too fresh, too sharp. Too much of offensive artillery that Jacobs not going to be able to handle. I got Darian Chanko putting a whooping on Jacobs, consistently tagging him with combinations to the body and head, outboxing him. And eventually stopping him in the later rounds. It's Deryachenko's time. He's going to show the world who he is at 160 pound division. He's going to display the superiority in boxing skills and sharpness and combination punching. It's just his time. Danny Jacobs has had his chance. He's had his opportunity. We all know his, his full ceiling here. He's just a glorified contender. But a never going to be world champion. And he's going to falter once again. To an Eastern European fighter. Deryavchenko by late round stoppage in a expiring great fight between two top middleweight contenders in a real real prize fight that I'm looking forward to tonight. Do not miss it on HBO. Jacobs versus Deryavchenko is going to be a war, but Deryavchenko will show his superiority as he will become the new IBF world middleweight champion and bring a champion to the PVC side of things in the middleweight division. Y'all let me know what y'all think. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.